What's up YouTube? Jeff, your style OG. And on today's video, I'm going to share with you nine habits you can work on developing to become a better leader. If you're new to the channel, we release a new video every Monday, Thursday, and Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern, discussing various men's lifestyle topics such as style, grooming, and dating. I invite you to subscribe, tap the notification bell, and join us. And to my returning friends like Paul Cage, salute. Now, most of us throughout our lives will either aspire to be, get thrust into, or assume leadership positions. And when we do, we want to be the best leaders we possibly can be. And there just so happens to be some habits that you can develop and work on implementing into your life that will assist you in being the best leader you can. And that's what I want to help you with on today's video. On today's video, I'm going to share with you nine habits that I definitely believe if you develop them in your life, you'll be on your way to becoming a great leader. So without any further delay, let's hop right into it. Now, one of the first habits you can work on to become a better leader is to get in the habit of responding, not reacting. A huge difference. You see, a great leader has emotional intelligence. He knows when a crisis comes, he needs to remain calm, process the situation, take his time, then react. Whereas a person who's not a good leader, he'll just react. A person who reacts just flies off the handle. He doesn't remain calm and in control of himself. You have to remember, when you're leading other people, they definitely pay attention at time of crisis. They will take cues on how you respond to a situation. The calmer you remain, the calmer they can be, and the more trusting they'll be in your resulting decision. So remember, to be a great leader, there are times when you have to make a decision, especially at times of crisis. What you want to do is survey the scene, process what's going on, take your time, and only then respond. Now, another habit you'll often find great leaders have in common, they have the habit of looking for solutions, not someone to blame. You see, a great leader realizes the buck stops with them if they want to be a leader. In fact, when mistakes occur or things don't go quite right, they'll often take blame even if it's not their fault. That's because they care about the solution, not blaming it on someone else. When a problem arises, a great leader isn't looking to find out who's at fault. He's looking to first fix the situation. There'll be plenty of time to realize where things went wrong, why they went wrong, and who's responsible after the problem has been solved. He doesn't waste time trying to figure out who can I lay this at the feet of. Say the why it happened, who did it, and whose fault it is for post-game analysis. A true leader realizes when a problem happens, he looks for solutions, not someone to blame. Now, another habit you definitely should work on to become a better leader, make sure you have the habit of being confident, not arrogant. You see, as a leader, yes, you should be confident and be able to display confidence. But you want to make sure you don't cross that thin line and that confidence bleed over into arrogance. So you may ask, what's the difference? A confident man, yes, he's self-assured in his strengths and his abilities. But he's also aware of and acknowledges his weaknesses and his limitations. An arrogant guy, on the other hand, he has an over-exaggerated sense of his qualities and his ability. You have to keep in mind when you're in a leadership position, people can see through an arrogant guy. They know you're not perfect. Stop trying to pretend you are. In fact, as a leader, it's okay to let your guard down and show some vulnerabilities from time to time. This will humanize you. It will make it easier for people to follow you. So yes, you need to be self-assured. Yes, you need to be confident, but don't go overboard. A great leader is confident, not arrogant. Now I want to take a little time to talk to you about today's video sponsor, Manscaped. Now you're probably familiar with Manscaped because of their trimmers and formulations specifically for below the belt grooming. Now they're going beyond the groin with the brand new Plow 2.0 safety razor for your face, neck, and beard. If you're a fan of a single blade close shave solution with maximum performance, then look no further. This precision weighted handle does all the work, so you don't have to apply extra pressure to your skin. The perfect solution for a smooth, close shave. Now, not only the Manscaped sponsors today's video, they've got a special offer for the Style OG family. All you have to do is go to manscaped.com style, and you'll get 20% off your order plus free international shipping. While you're there, check out both the Plow 2.0 and the Shed Travel Bag, a perfect way to store your Manscaped products. So if you're looking for a close, comfortable shave, go to manscaped.com style and pick up the Plow 
2.0. Now earlier, we talked about how a great leader leans on his strengths, but is aware of his weaknesses. This leads into the next habit you should want to develop. A great leader leans on his strengths, but he delegates out his weaknesses. What does this mean? A great leader realizes that if he has limitations and somebody else is better equipped to handle a situation, he lets them do it. You see, to be a great leader, you also have to know when it's time to follow, especially if someone's better at something than you are. This makes you a much better leader. Say, for example, you're a married guy. You may be great at a lot of things. What if your wife just so happens to be better at managing money? Do you need to get in your ego and your pride and say, no, I need to control the money? If she's better at it, have her do it. Or say, for example, you're in a professional situation and someone on your team is just better at a certain task. Delegate it to them. This makes the team and you better. And a great leader is also open to someone having different or better ideas. He hears other people's perspective. You see a great man, a great leader, focuses on his strengths, but he delegates out his weaknesses. Now, next up is what I believe is a very important habit to work on. You want to have the habit of being consistent. This is a very important trait in a leader. You see, when you do what you say you're going to do and you show up when you're supposed to, it makes the people that are following you more secure and feel more safe. They'll have a better ability to trust in your leadership. If you tend to act and behave in a similar way, it makes the people around you not have to guess what you'll do next. And believe it or not, them being able to count on you allows them to act instinctively. They know your basic principles and guidelines. They pretty much know what road you're going to take. Yes, you'll do things from time to time differently. Sometimes you'll change your mind. But the key thing is to be consistent in your principles and your stated values. A person that can be depended on to show up as themselves every time is an easy person to follow. It makes them a great leader. One of the best ways to remain consistent is to develop this next habit. Great leaders have a habit of planning, then pursuing. A leader doesn't fly by the seat of his pants. Great leaders are strategic and methodical. They make plans. They believe in that cliche, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. A man with a plan is better able to focus. You're less likely to get distracted. And when something unforeseen does come, having a plan that you're pursuing Having guidelines you go by makes it much easier to make smaller decisions. A great leader doesn't wait for things to happen to him. He takes charge, but he does it in a very methodical, well thought out way. He makes plans. When you have plans in the pursuit, it makes it much less likely for you to panic when unforeseen things happen. You want to be a great leader, plan, then pursue. And yes, although it is important to be consistent, have a plan and pursue it, Another important habit to develop to be a better leader, you have to be flexible. You see, the thing is, yes, a great leader is firm in his beliefs, but he's not overly stubborn. A great leader knows that when the facts on the ground change, he might have to change his mind. When he takes in new information, he processes and then thinks, hmm, do I need to go in a different direction? As a man, there's going to be times throughout your life when you have to adapt and evolve. If you're too stubborn, you won't have the ability to do so. Now listen, I'm all for you standing on your square, but don't stand too firmly on it. Stand on your square, but you might have to move if your square is on quicksand. A great leader is constantly learning. He's bringing in new information. He knows he doesn't know everything. And if he does learn something new or the situation changes, he has no problem being flexible. Now here's a habit that seems to be coming a lost relic in today's modern disconnected age. You want to develop the habit of building a network. It's very difficult to be a leader as a lone wolf. Who are you leading if you do everything by yourself? Besides, a great leader knows you get there faster and better with a great team around you. A great leader realizes the importance of team building and networking. He likes to surround himself with people that are knowledgeable and skillful and he doesn't feel threatened by people with better or different skills and knowledge than he may have in certain subjects or situations. Yes, you can achieve success as a person on your own, but that doesn't make you a leader. A leader has other people around him who work with him and follow him, and you develop this by team building and networking. Get some knowledgeable and skillful people around you. It'll make you a better leader. Now, once a leader has built a team around him and developed a network, he works on this next habit. The next habit of praising others and sharing recognition. You see, a great leader realizes the importance to people that follow him of appreciation 
and acknowledgement. He knows that offering people encouragement and sharing the spotlight is a great way to build morale. You get much happier troops that way. And here's the thing, as a leader, sometimes it will be necessary to criticize. You will have to call people on the carpet sometimes. But as a great leader, his instinct is to praise more and criticize less. And when there's goals achieved and success seen, the leader doesn't care if he gets credit or not, even if he's the engine that drove it. He's more concerned with the result. You see, when the people following you share your success, they'll be much more happy to put in more effort when it's time to achieve the next goal. So yes, as a leader, you'll be the recipient of a lot of glory, but a habit you definitely want to develop to become a better leader, praise people often and share recognition. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, there'll be times in your life that you either thrust into, aspire to be, or assume the position of a leader. And I firmly believe if you work on the habits we talked about in today's video, you'll be well on your way to being the best leader you possibly can be. Now, as always, I love to have your input. Let the Stology family know in the comment section some habits you think they can work on to be a better leader that I might have left off today's list.